Well, it's official. I am an assistant professor. Now, last time that I checked in with you, I was a couple of weeks um, away from transitioning to my formal role of a tenure track assistant professor. I was still in the postdoc stage. And it's been about a month since I've checked in now. And I want to let you know a couple of things that I've been feeling as well as some of the uh, administrative uh, changes that come about uh, when you, know, you're, you may be transitioning into your new um, assistant role. If you're new to Office Hours with Juan this channel is dedicated to uh, talking about how to survive and thrive in academia from the perspective of a first generation formerly undocumented scholar of color. And today we're going to be talking about my first episode as an assistant professor. All right, welcome to Office Hours. This is Office Hours with Juan Manuel, creating an academia without walls so you can thrive on your journey. So when I last spoke with you, I was on the precipice of becoming an official assistant professor. I had been on a two-year uh, postdoc uh, through the Society for the Humanities at Cornell uh, University. And halfway through it, I uh, negotiated, and was offered, and I accepted uh, a retention offer to stay and become an assistant professor. There are a couple of other episodes that will address that a little bit more down the road. Uh, but today what I want to focus on is situating in, in the moment. This is my first episode recording as an assistant professor. I even uh, recorded uh, the screen of me, the official kind of change from uh, my name before, uh, from postdoc to assistant professor here that's labeled, so it's official now that it's <laughs> changed. Um, but I just wanted to talk a little bit, uh, you know, about some of the past several weeks. Uh, my official transition um, was about a, a month and a half ago, and I actually took the time off from my assist for my postdoc position into 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 my official transition i took it off i had about three or four weeks where i shut off my laptop i closed it off i didn't turn it on i feel like it had been forever forever since i've had that luxury um you know going from a graduate program into the postdoc period you know being on the job market there towards the end of my graduate career um, I feel like my laptop was always on. I was always flipping up, you know, a uh, word processor, or Scrivener, or all sorts of word processing applications to get an application out or to get the, you know, writing sample out or getting um, other types of uh, documents out there. But I was able to actually shut it off for the last three weeks. I wasn't opening it. I was hosting family and friends. And that felt really good. Um, because I felt I owed it to myself, um, you know, after having done all of that work um, to secure such a position um, that I could just enjoy a little bit um, to shut it off. Now, that's, you know, in light of the fact that I don't want you to think that you need to constantly always be on. Now, if you look uh, at my other uh, episodes, there is one where I do talk about uh, the importance of prioritizing rest throughout your research and that episode uh, that for your rest agenda should be as important as research agenda. Um, will be uh, linked below um, and also since that time I've had the opportunity to already glim get a glimpse into the type of rewarding work that comes um, with talking with emergent and young, young scholars themselves. Um, fortunately I was invited to participate in a uh, summer pathways program that brought in uh, undergraduate students and recently graduated um, students who were interested in graduate program and these are first generation students and I was able to speak about my experience how I navigated uh, graduate school going into the details about you know what to consider when you're applying for graduate school what do the materials look like who to talk to and how to select a program as well as other uh, graduate um, program strategies for surviving and that was so rewarding and so enriching so for any of you um, folks um, who are watching this video that attended that session a shout out a special shout out to you uh, I know I did the uh, <laughs> um, a plug-in for office hours with Pomonel and I hope that some of you um, decided to, to join me um, for that session and so already you know, the, being an assistant professor comes with these great with these responsibilities, but also these great joys and participating in that um, summer pathways program through the uh, migrations initiative here at Cornell um, was uh, something that I'm already super grateful for. 
outside of taking the time off, you know, I knew that there was going to be some administrative changes coming into my formal transition, and I want to focus that a little bit um, this, this, on this episode. Um, for example, I knew that I would be transitioning and I would be onboarded into, you know, uh, new payment methods, um, a new uh, HR protocol um, for accessing information about my pay slips, about my work benefits, um, and the beneficiaries that along with that, and also how to, you know, communicate, you know, about uh, all of the uh, procurement cards or all the travel and meal cards that are associated with the research conference or making sure that I have all those. For my official transition, I knew that that was going to be something um, to take care of. Um, as you know, you know, part of what we do in academia is not just the research that we write about, but there's all sorts of um, components, you know, um, service to our department, to the university, to the field, um, as well as just the day-to-day -day experiences, you know, administration, um, making sure that you're getting your benefits, making sure that you're getting your pay, you know, your pay on time. All of that is a part of the things that we do in order to be successful and to thrive and, and to survive, to survive and thrive. So with that in mind, you know, I want to just uh, encourage you that as you transition, um, just to give yourself some grace and a grace period to know that there's going to be this transition period into identifying a new university system. Fortunately, I stayed at the same transition. I was going from you know a postdoc position to a tenure stream position and was aware of some of the back end administrative elements or systems um, that are used to you know track um, how you get paid, when you get paid, um, or how to process receipts. So I was a little bit familiar with that, but even having had that benefit, it was still hard to learn new conventions, to learn new workflows, to know who to reach out to, um, you know, at which center to get information. Um, you know, and these, these are complex systems and they just require a little bit of time. So I had the benefit of being at the same institution transition, but for you, if you're going through this transition and you're going from one institution to another, it's going to take a little bit of time to onboard you and to decide, you know, on your benefit selection and, um, and figuring all that stuff out. So just make sure that you give yourself that grace and that period, and if possible, make sure that it doesn't overlap with several writing deadlines. I know that's hard to plan, but you know, you are coming on to a new institution with a new a way of doing things, uh, you know, reporting information, uh, reporting uh, um, personnel information, and you know, requesting reimbursements, and you know, getting new cards. So that requires a lot of time. So make sure to plan for a one to two month transition period, if not more. I'm not saying don't write during this period, but I'm saying, you know, give yourself the time to send out emails to your local staff and your department, but also you may find yourself sent, having to send an email to your HR department asking to clarify to, about a couple of the um, back end things that you're required to do. Because you will get emails, you know, that you kind of set, have been set up for this X benefits or you're, you know, you're now on the TMA card, but that information may not always be as clear and you may not always know what to do. Um, the steps will be there. Fortunately, some folks are very um, good at this and, you know, they think through making sure that you have all the steps that are clear and I, I've had that, that, that benefit. And still, despite that, there's still some, you know, um, information that is not as clear or you're uncertain uh, about, you know, whether you should make a, you know, a purchase on this card or whether you need to get approval uh, for that one book purchase. Um, and then also the university say might have its preferences for certain um, platforms for purchasing certain items. And that kind of takes a little bit time to figure out. And um, you know, you want to give yourself that space to ask a lot of questions. In this episode, I guess I just wanted to check in and let you know that I've been kind of in the waters of administration after taking a nice and much needed break. Um, but if you um, stay tuned, um, the next couple of uh, episodes, I am going to be talking about the start of the semester, um, several weeks away from the start of the semester, not several, a couple of weeks away from the start of the semester. So I will be talking about how to prepare um, for that process. And then also I'll be able to talk a little bit more about what it feels like once I've actually started. Um, you know, my service to my department, my service to the field, um, and also to my campus. All right, thank you for joining me in this uh, episode of Office Hours. I'll see you next time. This is Office Hours with Juan Manuel. 
creating an academia without walls so you can thrive on your journey.